Uh, my name is Dan Tillman. Um, I'm, I'm with uh, Caldwell Banker Realty. Um, we are a, a family uh, affair, if you will. Um, my wife Mary is downstairs at the booth, manning the booth down there. We are uh, seniors real estate specialists. We are also um, uh, probate specialists. We are also divorce uh, specialists as far as uh, working with folks in that situation. And we also work with first time home buyers. And I'm Chad Blank, the third member of Team Tillman. Uh, different last name, but Mary's my mom, Dan's my stepdad, that's how we're all related, so it is one big happy family. So today we're talking about which home improvements pay off. And so this is coming from multiple perspectives. Um, you're going to see a lot of references. Um, we take a lot of our information from Modeler's Magazine. You'll see another source later on. But why renovate? How many people here have seen Love It or List It on HGTV? What? Love it or list it. A couple times. <laughs> so as you guys know, it's one of those shows where you see if you can renovate your house, love your house and stay in it, or do you just want to get rid of it and list it? As a realtor, I always hope they list it, but they generally always love it. And we see actually in reality, 70% of people decide to stay put in the home and they want to renovate it and make it more of their own. Now, I'm sure you're here at the Renovation Expo, so you're probably thinking of doing renovations sometime in the future. Um, if you're looking at selling or you're looking at staying in your house, we'll talk about both of those type of perspectives and how you may want to look and approach your house. So the first priority when you renovate your house, and where you need your biggest bang for your buck, is your general maintenance. Especially if you've been lacking a little bit in some areas in your general maintenance. For example, if your roof seems better decades in the past and you're waiting for that big hailstorm that just won't come. Or maybe you have some gutters that, you know, a holy bucket might hold more water than your gutters will. Those type of things, you tend to get, uh, that's where you get the biggest bang for your buck. When you're looking at kind of the additional value that you bring by doing different renovations, you have to look at what will happen when you sell your house. And a lot of buyers look at poor maintained homes as huge red flags. And even though, let's just say hypothetically, it may cost $10,000 to bring it up to current, in their mind, it's just huge price takes and maybe a twenty, thirty thousand dollar reduction in their head. So general maintenance is where you get the biggest bang for your buck. And the biggest thing about this is if you decide to go do that top of line kitchen or brand new bathroom, but you have a leaky roof and your ceiling keeps getting stained, that kind of deteriorates the new renovation. So here's just a couple of examples. So here, if you built that deck out back and your gutters kind of look like this, it kind of takes away from your from that brand new deck. Now this little garden we have here in the gutters actually looks kind of good and maybe if it's an herb garden you might be able to pull that put it on your barbecue or something but gutters like this actually cause a lot of damage for example we can have water back up through the roof that causes ceiling um, you know ceiling damage like that also gutters try to move water away from your house so if you just redid your whole basement you could be getting water in your basement because the, the water is not moving away so this is why we say general maintenance is the top priority before you do any other type of renovation. So the return on your investment. So a lot of times when you do some of these uh, particular items uh, on your house, you have to understand a lot of things and that is siding will be, in my case, I had rough cedar, I had uh, woodpeckers going after it uh, and it was always had to be painted about every seven years. And I had just gotten tired of doing that and I wanted something that was low maintenance. So I got into vinyl siding and, and the percentage that you get uh, back from that is, is kind of eye-opening because you think, well, I just got a new siding done so therefore I, I don't really need to, to it's going to get 100% of what I put into it. The only way that you're going to get really 100% uh, from it is if you stay in your home. You don't just fix it up just to get it fixed up and sell it, um, you do it because you're going to stay in the house for a while and, and it's time that you get some of these renovations done. Uh, windows, you're going to get the, that percentage as well, uh, but if you get energy efficient ones when you put them in like triple pane versus double pane with argon gas in between uh, and they're, they're uh, vinyl on the outside so therefore it matches with the no maintenance on the outside of your house is great idea and value, but again if you're going to stay in your home, that would be great. Um, landscaping. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money on landscaping. Uh, if you uh, maintain your yard as general maintenance, the shrubs, 
Don't let them overgrow and uh, disguise the color of your home uh, and, and those kinds of things. What you want is to make the home inviting, that you do the landscaping and people drive up and they look at it and go, I can't wait to get into through that front door to see the rest of the house. So these are items in which um, you, you can make some major improvements, but it's something that you want to stay in your home and get the best value or 100% of it over time. The last item there, or the one item is roofs. Um, a lot of people wait and don't do anything with their roof until um, there's uh, hail damage or wind damage. And about 95% of the people that get new roofs is that they've waited, 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 waited too long. And, uh, and all of a sudden it's like, well, now I have to dish my money out of my pocket in order to fix the roof. And that's between twelve and $15,000. So they'd rather wait until there's a hailstorm or a windstorm in order to get that value. That would be, uh, a lot of people do that. 95% of the roofs that are done are due to hail damage. People will, will welcome that when it's time, when the time comes. So let's say you're going to remodel and you go, well, I'm thinking about certain items in my home. I want to know, um, you know, what is the cost? I'm thinking about adding a bathroom or I'm adding uh, a front door or a garage door or something like that. Costversusvalue.com, if you go to the website, you'll be able to plug in four areas. One is, if you're from Minnesota and you're gonna do some work there, you'll find the mid-region, uh, which would be the first click on the website. And the second click on the website would be the state. And uh, then the third one would be the city, and, uh, and it would also back it up with the zip code. So now you get it all the way down to, let's say Hopkins, or Minnetonka, or St. Louis Park, or anywhere in the uh, metro area. You can click on that and you can plug in the zip code and find out all of these items and what, what the cost is. And, uh, and so you got an idea of where you're going to start with spending some of that money. Can anybody tell me um, uh, when they have a party, where do all the people end up? <laughs> the kitchens. Why? It's the most popular room of the entire home. Um, you entertain, uh, you have uh, chairs around a center island now, or a peninsula, you serve food, you serve hors d'oeuvres, you serve all of that. And so why is it that kitchens for $26,000 or less, you get a higher percentage return on your money? That's because over time, a smaller priced, a lower priced house in the 300s will get you more value over time and will recoup that and the value of what the new kitchen is gets up to 68%. Now, if you have a home that's six, 700,000 and up and you put 40 to 70,000 because the value of the home, you want a, a nice kitchen, so therefore it's going to be more expensive. The problem is it takes more time for that million dollar home or 700 to million dollar home to gain the value over time. Therefore, it's only 52% right out of the gate and it's going to take a long time to get your 100%. So when it comes to kitchens, it's my kitchen, my rules, okay? So you've got to be realistic. And any renovation, but particularly the kitchen, is gonna be um, uh, one in which you're gonna go, well, I gotta have certain kind of appliances, and I've gotta have certain kind of countertops, and I have to have certain kind of uh, flooring, and I have to have certain kind of backsplash, and I have a certain kind of, all these other things get into the play. So don't overspend uh, on any of these items. Uh, counters, countertops, you don't have to go with granite. You, you can go with soapstone, you can go with butcher block, you can go with uh, cambria, you can go with concrete, mm -hmm. and there's many ways in which that you can get different countertops and spend that money. 
you don't have to go with granite. Um, cabinetry and compare. If you're going to do enameling uh, color on some of your uh, kitchen uh, cabinets, you usually, you, you'll see it now where the cabinets are in one color and then you'll have a center island and the center island is a different color and it's all enamelized. Um, you don't need uh, hickory or walnut or um, any of the expensive woods, clear alder, and then go ahead and uh, enamel it. You can get, uh, you can get pine or maple or a, a birch, an inexpensive wood, and you can en enamelize it that way. Or if you don't want to do the cabinets it itself, you can also do covered doors and, and fix those up and change those out and enamel those if that's what you're going to do. Leave the boxes in place and then you can change the um, brushed nickel or you can change the fixtures to any color that you'd like, any type, type of metal. Uh, flooring. Uh, you can go crazy with flooring. You can go travertine if you want to really make it expensive. Uh, you can go tile. Uh, you can go with uh, hardwood floors. Uh, you can go with just the very inexpensive vinyl, uh, rolled vinyl. You can do that as well. Um, again, all of these things are options. And if you take your time and look at all those options and find out price, uh, it's going to help you in the long run of, of what your kitchen is going to end up versus what you paid for it. Mm -hmm. So bathrooms. So when you talk about remodeling, generally the rule of thumb is kitchens and baths, kitchens and baths. So for bathrooms, again, this is kind of broken down. You have, let's say, when you know your your house is priced like that, three, four hundred thousand maybe below. You're probably not spending sixty thousand dollars in the bathroom. You're probably closer to the fifteen thousand. If you have the higher end homes, it's expected to have the super nice bathrooms in there. So you're probably spending over the fifty five thousand. And again, you kind of slightly difference here in the uh, in the return on that, simply due to the buyer pool and who's looking for those different prices of houses. One thing to actually note here is we did this same presentation about five years ago. These numbers were actually quite a bit higher for the return. So they came down, and that's mostly, as we probably all know, the supply chains, the labor issues, et cetera, where construction is just more expensive now. So what $15,000 may have bought you pre-pandemic is you know, what you get now is completely different. So that's why we see some of these returns decrease a little bit. So let's talk about bathroom remodeling. Now, this is what I want to kind of differentiate between if you're planning to stay in your house and you're like, this is my house, I'm staying here, I want this to work for me, go crazy. If you live in a lower value house, be like, I want this humongous $60,000 bathroom, go for it. It's your house. You want to be the way that you want it to be living there. Now, if you're thinking about selling it in, let's say, five years, then you might want to start looking at, does that make sense? Am I going to get my money back on this? So a couple of things we like to always, always point out here master versus main so some houses don't have a master bath maybe you have a bath you know a a um, toilet and a sink in your master maybe you have a three piece in there with a shower uh, maybe you don't have anything you may want to look to see does it make sense to add a master bathroom a lot of people is very common to take away a bedroom and make a huge master suite of my two bedrooms together does that work for your house you know do you have ton of children in a, in, you know one child in every bedroom and you do that now you have ran out of bedrooms um, something to think about um, the first is updating kind of your main bathroom where everybody uses it bathtubs versus walking showers who here takes a bath every day nobody <laughs> yeah one person takes a bath every day baths are becoming Bath, you know, people taking baths become less and less common people do take them and they enjoy it my mom downstairs she takes if she had her way, probably three or four every single day in her jacuzzi tub. So uh, some people actually love it. Uh, again, if you are not a bath person, you never use your bathtub. I've never used a bathtub in my house. And you're going to stay there for a while and you want that humongous shower, go for it. If you're looking to selling it, though, you may want to think about, do I need a bathtub in here? A lot of people with young children who buy houses really want a bathtub. And that could be a deterrent for them. So that's something to think about. If you're looking, you know, that's the difference if you're going to sell or stay in your house. Kind of think about some of those things. One bathroom versus two bathrooms. Again, what works for you? 
Is, is it work out fine that you have one main bathroom and everybody uses it? Or do you need to kind of spread that up, you know? The kids just do not get along in the morning. They have two separate bathrooms. That would be life so much easier. That might be something you want to look at. Current location versus new location. Maybe look at the layout of your house. Does it make sense to add a new bathroom someplace? A couple examples might be maybe you have this lovely entertaining area, but no powder room. So all you guests have to go down the hall and use the main bath, or maybe go through into your room and use the master bath or something like that. Is there a spot to put a powder room? That might be something that can add a lot of value. A lot of people are looking to remodel their basements now. And a lot of times when people pour the concrete, they may have already pre-plumbed in for a bathroom. Well, that's the expensive part. So it's already pre-plumbed. It may make sense to put a bathroom in the basement if you're planning to expand that and make that a livable space. Anybody here have one and a half story houses? So a lot of people try to put bathrooms up there too and have like a master bedroom and a whole suite there. So that's something you might want to look at as well on adding. Try to see where you might make sense to put a bathroom and how it works for your family and kind of on the marketplace. The other thing I want to just mention with bathrooms is if you're looking to sell in the near future, take a look around what's kind of going on in your neighborhood. So for example, if you're in a very high-end neighborhood, million plus dollar houses, there could be this expectation you have a master suite with a huge shower and a jetted bathtub. So you get rid of that bathtub, now you're kind of, you know, you're not meeting the minimum standards of the neighborhood. Now, you might be in another neighborhood, maybe it's a little bit older, and when they built them, really, you did not put master baths in. So maybe you don't need it. Or if you do put it in, now that's a huge luxury when you go sell it that buyers are really looking for. So if you're looking to sell in the near future, it might make sense to maybe go through a couple open houses to see what other houses look like. Trust us, as realtors, we love nosy neighbors come through our open houses. So feel free to go through and kind of see what they've done and what it looks like in their houses. So new spaces. This is the other spot where people kind of think about when renovating. Bedrooms, family rooms, sunrooms. So this is adding additional bedrooms, family rooms, sunrooms. Classically here in Minnesota, we look to go down into the basement. A lot of us have unfinished basements. We look to finish it up, add some bedrooms, family rooms down there. You know, you could actually go up. We've seen people take the roof off their house, add a level, and make another, you know, another whole other floor upstairs. If you have the one and a half story and it's not being used, you can make that into a huge bonus room or make it a master suite, something like that as well. So looking for different spaces to add things. Sunrooms in particular here, this is one thing that's very important to kind of look at what's going on in your neighborhood. So for example, the higher end houses, they almost all have sunrooms. And if you don't have a sunroom, you might not, again, be at that standard and it might be able to bring significant value to your house. Now where I live, I'm in South Hopkins. I definitely am not in a million dollar house, but I overlook a huge nature preserve. Everybody looking over that has a deck or a sunroom. So if I didn't have either one of those, it'd be a huge addition to add that because it's expected in that six house area. Bonus rooms. Again, this kind of goes into finishing off that basement or that empty space you may have. Great place, especially if you have children and grandchildren. Someplace you can kind of throw them, let them run around. Now we get to adding additional thousand square feet. So this is like an addition, or as you said, adding a new level to your house. Or actually, I've been someplace where they've had double basements before. I don't think you want to go that low, but I, I've seen it. Again, 30% return. Biggest thing on this, it's expensive right now. You go talk to anybody downstairs, you'll see. It's expensive right now to renovate. And so you might not get that space back. But if you're going to stay in your house and that's what you want, we have a house that just went on the market today where they added this huge addition because they had elderly people living there and all the bedrooms were upstairs. So they added this addition so they could stay in the house and live on the main floor. That's what they wanted. They may not get 100% back on it, but it works for them. So that's something to think about. Second star garage or maybe third, fourth star garage. Again, kind of look at your neighborhood. If you're looking to sell, if you maybe have a one-car garage and most people have two-car garages, you would definitely up the value here. If most people have two-car garages and you're like, I love cars and I love to work in cars, I need a six-car garage, great, go do it. Just know when you sell your house, those additional four stalls may not come back in an increase in um, price. And then the outside patios. So Dan will talk to you a little bit about kind of landscaping type of things. But again, you love being outside, you love being outdoors. 
put it in the patio in. But I would say, if you're looking to sell, don't put one in and go, okay, patio's in, let's sell the house. Enjoy it. If you're going to sell, let's say, this spring, it's not the time to put a new deck on. If you're going to sell four years from now and you want a deck, put the deck on. Landscaping <clears throat> falls under general maintenance. And like I said earlier, um, you want to make sure that the shrubs are well maintained, uh, that the weeds are, uh, the flower beds and the shrub beds are all maintained with either bark or rock. Um, you can s put a spray on the rocks to make sure that uh, every 90 days you don't have any weeds coming in. Uh, I'm not a weed picker, so I don't, uh, that's the easy way to go. But general maintenance, lawn, lawn care, um, just making your uh, lawn look appealing, um, not to keep up with the Joneses, but just general maintenance, mowing, uh, raking, just general cleanup. Um, and, and, but that can be costly. So if you, if you let it go, and then you decide, oh, I can't see out my bedroom window or the front of the house because the shrub or the tree is growing up so large, I should have trimmed that a long time ago. Well, now I gotta get somebody with a chainsaw. Well, now it gets to be costly. And to, to remove that is a lot of money. And, and it obviously for that length of time does not make your front yard or backyard look very good. So the idea is, again, general maintenance. Make sure that it looks as good as you can, and if you don't have the opportunity physically to get out there, and you end up having someone come and maintain your lawn, um, again, that's a, that's a costly expense. The, the maximum investment, uh, if you're gonna do any landscaping, um, you know, make sure that you, are done, that you do it tastefully. I personally uh, wanted to add shrubs, and I uh, don't have a green thumb, so what I did was I, I had a, uh, a Bachman's come out and they actually uh, gave me a plan what shrubs should go in. Um, maybe I want to put some solar lights in there and, and so on and so on. They're the experts or an expert landscaper will be able to tell you and draw that up. The only cost involved was you bought the shrubs from that company. The plan was free. So all the edging, the bark, or the rock, or whatever you put in, the lights and all that, you pay for that um, on your own, but the actual layout is, uh, and it turned out beautifully, and I had that uh, done probably 20 years ago, and I've been able to enjoy it every day. You want to convey a sense of welcome. When someone comes over, and they drive up, and they see nice flowers, or the shrubs even in the wintertime, or the evergreens are, are still stout and the, even though it's cold outside. And it just makes the, either it looks like a winter wonderland or it looks like uh, the arboretum in the summertime. Um, you want that welcoming feel. And, it, and, it's, and if you enjoy that kind of thing and you still physically can do that, good for you. And it's gonna, it's gonna pay off in the long run. The return on investment is about 50% immediately but if you actually um, take your time and you want to stay in your home and enjoy it uh, and it looks great and inviting when you decide it's time to move on uh, you'll be able to uh, you know get full value out of it fact or myth any remodeling is a good one not always you don't want to be too creative like I said with the kitchen and Chad said with the bath You've got to make sure you keep a tight pocketbook if that's what you want to do and make it as minimal but as nice as you possibly can. That's pretty hard to do sometimes, but it, it is possible. And so <clears throat> what you want to do is, is make sure like even in the kitchen, you don't overspend. In the bathrooms, you don't overspend. In the landscaping, you don't overspend. So you, you, and, and estimates from general contractors and, and subcontractors in this field, um, most of them are free. They, they, they want your business and they're willing to give you an estimate on what you want to do. Um, so there's a few things here that, that we, uh, we saw in some homes that were for sale. And um, like Chad said, if, you're, if you are gonna stay there for a while and you wanna add this or do that, great, go for it. Um, <clears throat> someone had an art gallery. And I, I appreciate art, I love art, 
and it's great if you're a very good artist and you want to display your items in the house or an area uh, and they're beautiful and you're very talented great that's wonderful but when you sell the home I'm not I don't I couldn't draw I can draw a stick man that's about it I mean it's that, I'm, it's that sad but I, I uh, I'm not very good at art and I appreciate everybody that is but um, I, it might not do any good for me and I have to figure out if I were to buy that house, what am I going to do with that room? How can I change that out to my personality and my, my, my thoughts? Uh, we had one that had a concert hall balcony. Um, again, it's uh, good for them. And uh, the gentleman that had that home was in, uh, in Golden Valley. And he was, uh, he, he was there when, uh, when the showing was going on. And he was very proud of the fact that he had built that. And, and it was his prized possession and treasure, and he had enjoyed many, many hours, months, years in that room. Um, this next one, trophy room. Very unique. I, I was thinking, uh, you know, I uh, was an athlete back in the day, so, you know, you had a lot of medals and awards and trophies, and I thought, man, this would, this would be a great room. That wasn't what that room was for. That room was for... This gentleman was a big game hunter, and it was taxidermy animals that were in that room. And I, uh, I was amazed and I was impressed. But again, that was a room that I, that for resale, you know, I, I, I had a hard time trying to figure out what I would put in. So things that you do do, you enjoy it over the years, but you might not, when it's time to sell, it's going to be captive item to where you're going to have to find somebody that would appreciate that or have a plan for that. Um, so these are some odd upgrades that you know you you may do, and it's going to be for you, and you know, hopefully you'll be in there for a long, long time to enjoy it. But resale, um, you know, you, it might be a struggle. Um, can I do the reservation myself, fact or fi fiction, or myth? No, and I can tell you I experienced that firsthand. Um, I worked for a general contractor for three years, and uh, I was a job soup, and I did uh, I supervised a lot of uh, commercial renovations as well as home renovations, and I was involved with six, eight, ten of them at the same time trying to juggle all these projects. Um, so when I, when when Mary and I remodeled our home. We, um, I decided, I said, well, I'll general, and I'll, I will do the work that I can do, and I will, I'll hire out or subcontract the ones that I can. Well, you know, sometimes you think you're Superman, and once in a while I wear the cape, and I, I can do this, I can do this. And I get halfway into the project and realize I should never have started this project, and all the work that I did uh, is not, it will not work. And then you call in a professional and what does he have to do? Tear everything out that I already did and start from scratch and do it the right way, not my way. So um, I learned the hard way. I really did. Um, and, and the professions uh, are the ones that you should, the professionals, you should leave it to them. If you can't do it, let them do it. Um, you want to save money, sure. So if you want to save money, tackle the smaller projects, the easier ones, uh, the ones in which you know that you can do, or you have someone lined up to help you to do those. It, it's, it's a smart uh, investment versus what I try to do. Pools. Anybody have a pool in their house? Anybody wish they had a pool in their house? <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually starting to see this trend. So first of all, let me just start with pools. So if you had a pool, or you think about putting a pool, and you know you're going to use a pool, go for it. Uh, we'll go through, there's, some, there's a lot of negatives for having a pool, but if somebody really wants a pool in their house, they want that pool. And so when we start working with buyers, and they go, we need to buy a house with a pool. There's not many out there. There's not many houses out there with pools anymore. So if you do have a pool, there is a very strong group of buyers looking to buy that house. So it keeps the value up. Now you have a pool, there's a group of buyers that will not buy your house. 
in which, so that kind of helps level out the playing field. So really, pool doesn't really add value, it doesn't really take away value, it kind of, equal, this is equilibrium there. So with pools, so as I mentioned, there's kind of this trend going on now, where uh, Dan, where he had his house before, there used to be tons of pools in the neighborhood, and everybody just kept filling them in. And the reason why is because, all these reasons. We're not known to having the longest summer. I know we enjoy our summers when it's here. Trust me. I had a coworker who has a pool, and she'll heat that thing up. Probably, it might actually be open now, to be honest, the way she goes. <laughs> and she won't close that thing until probably Christmas. But that's her. Most people, you have four or five months maybe you can use the pool. You have some liabilities. Insurance is expensive. City codes, et cetera. So when we talk to people, and they say, I want to add a pool in our yard, well, we don't discourage them from doing it. Now, you know, that's what you and your family want, go for it. But again, if you're thinking about selling your house in a few years and you think about adding a pool, then maybe we need to have a little bit of conversation. One thing, though, to note is, again, kind of go back to the bathrooms, back to the kitchens, is take a look around your neighborhood. There's some neighborhoods, especially higher-end neighborhoods, where you need to have a pool in that house. Um, and if you don't have a pool, again, there's this minimum standard your neighbors are setting. If you're not up to that, it doesn't look so good when you try to sell it. But, you know, if you're not in one of those higher end neighborhoods and a lot of your neighbors don't have pools, which that's most neighborhoods, there's not that requirement to have a pool. So if you want one, put one in if you're going to use it for many, many years. If you're going to sell next summer, probably hold off on it. And then latest trends. So when we update it, we all know the latest trends right now. Gray walls everywhere, white, all woodwork, etc. Anybody? So when I bought my house, it was last we bought it in the 70s. I peeled very delicate floral wallpaper off the walls, inch by inch by inch. People remember kind of the borders of wallpaper that went around. You don't really see those anymore. Um, colors. I have a peach toilet and a peach tub. Very in at one point. Probably not coming back. So when you do your remodels, there's a couple things to think about. If you, again, if you're planning to stay in your house, you do whatever you want. It's your house. You want you're living there. We want you to love it. So you want to be with the greatest, the most trends out there, and be kind of leading that trend line. Go for it. But just think about it. 15 years from now, are you okay with? You're gonna have to update that to the next trend. Now that doesn't mean. You do right now, you do a full renovation of your kitchen, you pull everything out, and you do it. You won't necessarily have to do that 15 years from now. You can update colors and backsplashes and tiles and flooring without doing it, but it's something that's going to happen. If you're looking to sell the next few years, one thing we always suggest is go more neutral. Gray is fine, the tans are fine for paint. Um, again, just keep everything more neutral. Don't go kind of outside the box. It's kind of our general suggestions because that attracts more of the buyer pool. But again, if you're not looking to sell, do whatever makes you happy. Just know that when you do sell, or eventually you might think, what was I thinking when I did this? <laughs> so you might have to update it in the future. So the return on your investment is influenced by the following. Uh, renovation versus the neighborhood, your neighborhood. Okay. Um, find out what your current home value is. It is not the tax value on your on your uh, property taxes. It's uh, considerably higher than that. It's not uh, Zillow either. It, and it's not, it's not real, <laughs> not, not real. Um, so uh, we uh, certainly as realtors can help you with that. Uh, we call it a market analysis and we can, even if you're not interested in selling, we can certainly help you with that by getting a, a market analysis of comps in your neighborhood. Um, takes a few days to get it put together. And, uh, and that will give you a good starting point. Um, value of your home versus the neighborhood. Um, are you in the middle range of your neighborhood? And what is your neighborhood? Is it uh, you know, four blocks surrounding your, your home? Is it uh, uh, the same, uh, you're, you're in a, com a community where they're all uh, twin homes or um, uh, they're, they're condos, uh, you know, they're all pretty much the same? That would be your neighborhood, if you if you will. Um, so uh, we we got to determine, you know, what are the values of your home? Are you in the middle? Are you on the upper range, or are you in the, the lower range of what you're in? And, and we can certainly help you with with that as well. Um, the housing market. 
Um, uh, it is still hot. It is still, uh, inventory is low. Uh, and when homes go on the market, it's like a feeding frenzy. Uh, and I, I will experience that this afternoon in an open house that we're having. Um, it, we expect, you know, 40, 50 people today. And it's going to probably go over asking. And, uh, and it's in Minnetonka schools. So uh, we've got a lot going on uh, for that. Uh, so it's going to cost you over asking for the most part at this point in, the, uh, in, in real estate. Um, so how soon do you sell after the renovation? Chad and I have been talking about that. If you're going to do a renovation and it's going to be you and it's special to you and you don't really care um, you know what what that is compared to the neighborhood and you're going to stay there a long time we we uh, as as chad would say go for it um, but if you're not and you just want to spruce it up you've always wanted to put uh, something uh, an add a room somewhere in your home uh, uh, you certainly can uh, but what's the quality of your renovation then so and how long do you plan on staying after you do that we say if you want to do that and, and renovate Hopefully, you'll stay in your home for a while and enjoy that renovation that you've done. That's the whole reason behind it. And when you sell, it will be able to be enjoyed and it's not out of the uh, realm of the unusual rooms that you added. Um, quality of renovation, huge, huge plus. If you're good and you've got a, uh, if you've got a talent of woodworking and you want to do uh, finishing work or you've got an idea of you can build a bench or this or that, or make a table or a bank banquette or in your kitchen, and those kinds of things, great. And your renovation will be very high quality. But if you're not like me and you can do the simple tasks, it might not be something that you want to tackle. Uh, you'd hate to have someone sit uh, on a banquette and the next thing you know, it drops or it, it breaks or you put uh, your joist hangers on a deck and you think you can do it and you put them 24 inches on center and you only use two by fours and you wonder why it's got a bounce to it. Well, maybe uh, you should have put them on 12 on center and you made them two by sixes instead. But if you just kind of go ahead and wing it and do it without asking a professional or knowing what you're doing, the chances are you're gonna end up ripping that deck out and redoing it the right way. Very costly. So um, again, remember these items right here. Value of your homes in the neighborhood, housing market. How soon do you sell after the renovation? Are you gonna stay there? Great. If not, well, you might wanna think about that. And then quality of your renovation. Um, comparisons. Uh, this will set your renovation limit, okay? So how big is your neighborhood? Is it one square mile? Is it three blocks around? What are you using to compare the value of your home compared to the values that are out there? And you want to make sure that, that you know, your, your renovation is, is still fit for the quality and look of the neighborhood. You don't want to be something unusual um, and it's got to stay within the, um, the, the view and quality and likeness of the neighborhood. Um, is that, like I said, a one mile radius? or is it three blocks around? That will determine value, how much you put into it, and, and how long you plan on staying in that home. And maybe perhaps what you owe on the house if you have to get a, a, a second mortgage. Now the value is, you know, you're, you're paying more money to get something that you want, and then, oh, by the way, I, I'm not staying very long. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna sell the house. Well, now you've just, and you're, 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 you defeated your purpose here. You want to make the renovation a very nice one, a quality one, one in which can be used not only after you use it and live in there, but when you sell, it's also passed on, and they're going to take advantage and use it as well. Um, is there an association involved? Uh, are there things that you can and cannot do on the outside of your place, and maybe you can get some ideas from other people that have renovated their place and see what they've done and, and what maybe that would be adaptable to what you're wanting to do. Um, your community, um, what community you're in, what the laws are, the codes are, etc. 
and make sure that you're doing the right thing. Um, time frame. Now, this is interesting because Mary and I renovated our home. We got out of there. We, we gutted the house. Um, I took the insulation from the outside of the house and put it on the interior wall so it was dead in the sound, just like the, the real nice homes. I got that idea because the outside of the home was a little cold and it probably would have needed new insulation anyway. So that's what I did. Um, our time frame was 10 months. Um, was, did we expect that? We expected it was going to take some time, but you know, we had Tyvek on the outside of our house before the siding went up, and I did all of that work because that's something I could do. Um, siding is not my, my forte, so we had somebody come in and do that. So our time frame on the outside of the house, it was dead of winter. I had Tyvek up there for about three months until the weather got nice and we could get them in. But three to six months is it going to take? Are you going to live in the home while you do the renovation? Sometimes that's not a good idea. Um, it's very inconvenient, and it's uh, you got people trampling through and trying to get things done, and you're just like, when are you going to get done? When are you going to get out of here? I didn't realize it was going to take all this time, and suddenly you're just like, wish we never would have done this. So have a plan and understand that there's going to be um, a lot of, uh, somewhat chaos at times. Not all the time, but sometimes. So where do I start? Well, um, here's some tips, four of them, that the first thing you can do is uh, talk with a realtor. Um, uh, Chad, myself, Mary would be happy to sit down with you and work with you and find out what your current price of your home is. Um, neighborhood values, like we talked about in the previous slides. And average days on the market, that's a key. How fast are the homes in your neighborhood selling? Um, is it a desirable neighborhood? Um, how fast would be, used to be, well, it's been on the market for about 45 days. I think they'll probably reduce the price, kind of, you know, maybe give them a lower offer. Now, it's like two days, four days on the market. Going over asking. Um, and closing dates are within three weeks or four weeks at the most. So uh, you got to remember all that because it, you, you might be out of your house quicker than you think um, uh, if that's what you're going to do. It gives you an idea of, well, this is a desirable neighborhood and where I live and prices are great and values are up and, and uh, you know, they're going pretty quick. So, um, so when you, then you want to determine the appropriate renovations that will fit your home. What is it exactly that you want to do? And, 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 and why is it that you want to do it and how long are you going to stay there, okay? Um, and the value of your neighborhood. Where are those values? Where do you fall into that realm? Are you the high end, middle, or low? Um, and again, you, in previous slides, be realistic. Be realistic. Be smart with your money and make sure that the renovation is, is going to fit with what you want. You're going to enjoy it. And then when you sell it, it's going to be passed on. And somebody's like, wow, they put a bathroom in here. Wow, they did this. Wow, they put a sunroom in. Wow, they did an extra space bonus room. Wow, this is great. And it's very desirable. So preview the builder spec homes. We've got Prada to Homes coming up, as Chad mentioned. So, you know, this is a great time for you to go walk through these homes. Uh, by the way, they're open during the day, uh, during the week, like noon to 6, not just the weekends. So if that's something that you uh, you have time to do during the week, certainly do that. Where do I start on tips? Make a wish list. Okay. Needs on one side. Wants on the other. Needs, wants. Okay. Again, be realistic. This can get way out of hand, or you can keep tabs on it and be and do the renovation and make it look really good and functional and high quality and not pay a lot of money okay some of the work you may be able to do yourself or you have someone that you know of a family member or relative and it's a plumber or a framer or an electrician and ask if he can help or she can help 
Shop around for a general contractor, subcontractor, if you want to go that route. They will give you, and there's plenty of them downstairs that will be able to work with you, um, that will be able to go through, find out your renovation, and give you an estimate. But make sure that the fit, fit and finishes that you want on that, you tell them what you're looking for. I don't want tile, I want a fiberglass insert. Okay? I don't want granite, I want something else. I don't need travertine floors, I want just tile. I don't want um, uh, alder or hickory cabinets, I'm painting them with, or enamelizing them, I just need pine cabinets. Or I'm going to leave the boxes and change the doors out and still paint them. So I don't need doors that are made out of alder, clear alder or cherry, just pine, maple. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the other thing is get referrals from them. I want to see your work. Tell me addresses and people. And I want picture. I want to see what you did, and I want to talk to the people that you work with, and do that. It's your right to do that, and find out really how good are they, or did they cover something up? Or they'll tell you the the owner that had this work done with by this contract. They will tell you. Okay. The next door app remodeling fair that we have going on downstairs. Uh, friends, realtor, you know Chad, Mary, and I would be more than happy to help you out. Okay and get references, okay? So now it's time to sell. Eventually your house will be sold. So when it gets time to sell, maybe you're looking to renovate and sell in your future. We've got some great tips for you. Um, biggest thing is take before and after photos of your renovation. And actually I'm gonna go even further. Take before, during, and after <laughs> of your renovation. If you're looking to sell, one thing we love to do with renovations, if you have the photos, is we'll put together an actual storybook to say, here's what it looked like before and after, and here's what it looked like when all the walls were gutted and everything else like that, and it really paints that picture. For example, we can say, oh, they insulated the entire house. That means something to people. But if we show photos of, look at this spray foam throughout this entire house, <laughs> that's a way better visualization. Um, and when the drywall goes up, you can't see any of that stuff. Another thing is, a lot of times when you renovate, you may say, oh, I have a future project I want to do, but it's going to be easier, for example, move some pipes now to accommodate that future project. Or, like, for example, when Dan and Mary renovated their house, they had a wood-burning fireplace, but they wanted to make it so somebody could convert that to a gas fireplace, so they ran a gas line through it and hid it in the wall. Take pictures of that stuff, because one, when you finally get to it, you may not remember exactly where everything went or what it may look like behind those walls. And it'd be very easy to hand your contractor saying, hey, we already did some stuff. Here's what it looks like. And it'd be great for them. And again, it's something that helps trigger that memory. So when we do sell your house, we can really sell those components. And the last thing I'll mention here is also we have, when you do sell your house, there's a disclosure form you have to fill out. So we'll provide you a 16-page, essentially, questionnaire all about your house. And any renovations you did, you need to disclose all that on here. So by having these photos, it really helps trigger those memories on exactly what it is that you did. Now you might be thinking, I'm not selling forever, so why would I want to take these photos? It's still nice to have these before and afters, and you know, when you finish that huge kitchen renovation, and all your neighbors and friends come over, and maybe they haven't been there for a while, you're like, hey, let me show you what this looked like before so you can see how big an improvement this is. It's great to have those photos. So with that, any questions for from the presentation. Wow. <laughs> we covered all the bases? Fantastic. <laughs> I guess like, um, you say you check out your neighborhood and your neighborhood's changing. Yep. Um, like my neighbor, I'm in St. Louis Park. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are wondering how that's going to affect their homes, home values, a lot, you know, more cars coming in, things like that. Well, usually the city, uh, their infrastructure, is uh, the way in which they do that is to make the traffic flow, ample parking, and they don't want the values to go down because that's revenue for their city to pay the bills. So in that case, um, some people say, well, I look at a, in my backyard, I look at an apartment building. Well, there's ways in which you can disguise that with trees mm -hmm. and, and maybe a fence so that you don't get anybody coming in or cutting through. Um, these are things that will enhance your your property 
Um, but as far as the values go, St. Louis Park is a, I, I grew up there, okay. so it's, it's, um, it's the center of the grid. So when you, wherever you live in St. Louis Park, you can go north, south, east, or west on any uh, freeway that crosses the intersections that can get you anywhere you want to go pretty easily. Uh, that is the center of the grid. So you can go uh, to Minnetonka or you can go to uh, downtown Minneapolis really easily by jumping on uh, different freeways to get there. So really they're going to be smart about what they put in, the amount of buildings and units that they put in. Uh, as far as the value is concerned, it depends on how close you are, but it shouldn't really affect your property because the city doesn't want that to happen. So, um, I don't know, you might want to add a little bit on that. If yeah, you want. I think it's down to a very specific property by property as well. You know, mm -hmm. as Dan mentioned, is the apartment buildings going in your backyard? Is, did they change the street in front of your house to the main throughway mm -hmm. or that type of stuff? So there could be some potential changes depending on the house, but it's probably going to be house by house specific. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily the general area. Right. right. Is it uh, better to sell a house staged or empty? That's a really good question. <laughs> so we we actually used to provide staging services as part of as part of our real estate services. Um, we no longer do that. And right now, almost regardless of the condition you put the house on, it sells quickly. So the staging really doesn't provide a significant amount of effort now. Now if we go to a very slow market and it's a buyer's market, it could become more beneficial. Not everybody, I'm one that can walk in and I can visualize everything. Other people walk into a house and they can't visualize nothing. So there's no furniture there. They don't know where the couch is going, where's the TV, you know, how big of a bed can I fit in here? So it really kind of depends. And then also goes to more on the, the, the value of the house. You tend to see more of the higher ends, the million plus houses. Those tend to be more staged. And that's because they're trying to really push the more luxury updates they did and having the higher end furniture and that type of stuff in there really helps sell that story. But in this market right now, I don't personally think staging makes a huge difference. Um, that could change though as the market changes. One other thing to note is if you don't have the furniture, there is other options. It's like virtual staging where you can actually kind of like do Photoshop put furniture in so the pictures have the furniture. It's another option as well. But I don't know, Dan, do you have any other thoughts on that? Um, the cost of uh, staging a home. It depends on how many rooms, bedrooms, baths, and, and all of that. Um, sometimes you can put some accent pieces like towels mm -hmm. in the bathroom. Uh, you can leave a few pictures on the wall if you so desire. Um, but the cost involved can go from anywhere from, oh, two thousand dollars to forty-five hundred to five thousand, depending on the type of furniture you want, the quality of furniture you want, how many rooms you want to get done, etc. So. Uh, it's not cheap, uh, and we used to stage, like Chad said, but houses are going so fast that they don't really care uh, what you got in there. Uh, they just, you know, they. it doesn't matter. You could stage it, and the next thing you know, it's like, oh, I don't, and two days later, we're taking it out and putting it in somewhere else. So, um, it, but that's the cost involved if you're interested in doing it. And there's staging companies out there that, will take care of that for you. They'll figure out, they'll come out and look and see what you got, what you want, mm -hmm. and what rooms you want, and so on and so forth, and give you a price on that, and then there'll be people to come in and put it in there, you don't have to touch a thing, um, and then um, and they'll take it out when it's done. It just seems like it would be, at least in my opinion, less stress for the buyer to uh, market it empty. Yeah, so if you're planning on moving everything out. Um, yeah, we're planning yeah. on moving probably yeah. within the year. Yeah, so yep. if you're moving all your stuff out, then yeah, definitely it's, it's less, less stress for you. You can take all your furniture with you. And that makes it easier to kind of clean things up as well and just make it really nice shine for the new buyers. Dan and I will stick around outside and answer any more questions, but we want to be respectful for the next speaker. Thank you so much for all of your time, and uh, hopefully you got something out of this. And again, we'll be outside, and we can certainly... Uh, chat with you, any questions that you may have, um, any you want a CMA done or uh, just some other questions, we're certainly uh, accessible to help you. Thank you.